Day one of the NBA draft has concluded in this new two-day format that the NBA has going on. I definitely prefer the two-day format. I mean, I think the first round went longer than it normally would have in the two-day format, but man, I, I can't get through two two rounds in one go. I, I much prefer this format. But of course, we are here to talk about what the King, Kings did with the 13th overall pick. Everyone, of course, wanting a wing or a front court player or to trade the 13th overall pick. There were rumors swirling all the way up to when the Kings made the pick that the Kings could be trading for Kyle Kuzma or Cam Johnson. And of course, neither of those things happened. I think they both still could happen, but neither of those things happened. Washington got the 14th pick in a trade uh, where they sent out Denny of Dia. And so maybe that hurt the Kuzma trade. I don't know. But instead, the Kings made the pick and they went with Devin Carter. And I think Devin Carter is a prototypical Monty McNair player. Older rookie, 22 years old. He's 6'3 with a 6'9 wingspan out of Providence. And Monty McNair has just, he's been trying to get the Kings like Josh Hart type player, that that type of player for a while now. You had Colby Jones uh, in the last draft. And then obviously you had like Davion Mitchell, just like a defensive guard. And so he tries again here. Devin Carter, he averaged almost nine rebounds per game at 6'3". He averaged 19.7 points per game, 3.6 assists, 1.8 steals, and one block per game. Shot 37.7% from three last year at Providence. And so of course, everyone immediately, the reaction, including myself is, why another guard? Why another guard? We have so many guards. We now have eight guards on the roster. So you have Fox, Monk, Davion Mitchell, Kevin Herter, Colby Jones, Keon Ellis, and Devin Carter and Chris Duarte. So you have eight guys and you still are very limited in terms of what you have on the wing. And so why, why do you take another guard? But I think this is the reason why. Throughout this whole, you know, process coming up to the draft, I'm thinking the Kings should draft to fill their biggest hole on the wing. But then I I still was saying like the Kings need more ball handling and another guard off the bench, and I just thought that would be filled through free agency, and that was especially if Malik Monk left, he didn't leave. So it changes it a little bit, but I still think the Kings need a little more ball handling. And so that brings me to something that John Hollinger wrote about this pick. It seems like everyone uh all the draft experts love this pick for the Kings. They love Devin Carter. And so what John Hollinger wrote was he was saying that the Kings desperately needed backcourt depth. And of course, Kings fans reacting to that are like, what are you talking about? You know nothing about the Kings. The Kings have now eight guards. And while it is true they have eight guards, I don't normally agree with John Hollinger on things, but I actually do agree with him that the Kings need backcourt depth to some extent because you have Fox you have Monk, and then you just have a bunch of question marks after that. So you have Keon Ellis. He was great when given opportunity, but people are hyping him up. I've said this before. People are hyping him up a little too much. Like, it's he's still a question mark. I love Keon, but if that's your starting two guard, like, you can upgrade it still, right? And so then you have other guys. Kevin Herter had a bad season. Seems like he'll be traded. That's a question mark. Davion Mitchell, a massive question mark. Just everyone else, a question mark. Colby Jones, a question mark for what he's going to be going forward. Like, sure, you have eight guards, but only two of them you can truly trust to be in the rotation. And, you know, I have some, you know, if Kevin Herter is still here, I have some faith in him. But still, there is absolutely holes. And I wanted the Kings to address the guard spot. The Kings, like Keon Ellis is not just a lockdown starter at the two guard, like some people are treating it. Like I've never thought that. There is absolutely still a hole at the two guard spot. Devin Carter at 6'3", but he's got a massive wingspan. That rebounding guard, he's a great defender, just a tenacious defender. He can play on the ball, off the ball. That's perfect. And so now what this means for the future of this offseason is the Kings need to trade some of their guards for front court and wing depth. And if they can do that, this pick makes a lot of sense. If they don't do that, sure, this pick doesn't make sense. But if they can trade some of their guards for wings, the offseason isn't even close to over. If they can do that, 
then this pick makes a lot of sense because it honestly makes more sense if you're trying to win now to trade some of your guards to get a veteran wing player to start right away rather than drafting someone to fill that wing spot. Because like I said, you're probably, you were probably never going to start someone, even if you pick a wing, you weren't going to start them from day one at the wing spot. So you want that veteran that can come in and start right away, like a Kyle Kuzma or a Cam Johnson. I would love a Cam Johnson plus Dorian Finney-Smith trade because I'm not sold on like just Dorian Finney-Smith or even just Cam Johnson. But if you can get both of them, that adds a lot of depth. And so having Devin Carter as a guy that can come off the bench or possibly in the future win that starting two guard spot, I think is great. I think it just means that Kevin Herter and Davion Mitchell don't have much of a future on this team. I think the battle is going to be Colby Jones and Devin Carter. And then you have Chris Duarte as the depth there. And I actually think that that makes a lot of sense. Because when you look at the, the guys that were on the board for the Kings at 13, you had Dalton Connect. That was probably the number one guy just in terms of talent on the board at that point. You also had Tristan De Silva, who I really like as a wing player. And so that could have been an option. But when you look at a guy like Dalton Connect, I know some people are like, why didn't they pick Dalton Connect? But really, like Dalton Connect does not does not fill a need. Like he may be bigger and be more of a wing than a Devin Carter, but he's not giving you any upgrade defensively on the wing that can guard size, which is the whole point of us having no depth on the wing is we need guys that can defend on the wing. And so it's fine if you think Dalton Connect is just the better player than Devin Carter, so you wanted Dalton Connect, that's fine. But in terms of drafting both of them, if you're getting mad about the fit of drafting Devin Carter, then I think it's the exact same thing with Dalton Connect. And Devin Carter actually fits better because of how good he is defensively, how he can rebound, and how he can play on the ball and off the ball. I think the one thing is hopefully Devin Carter is shooting like 37.7% from three. Hopefully that that is real. And he really is a shooter. He shot 75% from the free throw line. And so he needs to be able to shoot from three uh, to be able to play, definitely. And kind of in the moment of when we picked Devin Carter, it's, it was like, why did we pick a guard? And then you just like, you see the the rebounds, 8.7 rebounds per game. And you're like, wait, that says 6.3. And then it says 8.7 rebounds per game. And it's like, oh, I get it. And uh, yeah, Devin Carter and Colby Jones, kind of similar players in terms of getting comparisons to Josh Hart, in terms of rebounding guards. And to me, Devin Carter, he just seems like he's going to win Summer League MVP. And that's pretty much just because the last two first round picks for the Kings have won Summer League MVP, so I just expect it. Uh, but because they're older players, you know, Keegan Murray came in, won, won Summer League MVP, Davion comes in. Uh, wins Summer League MVP. So now Devin Carter, he just feels like that same type of player. And I couldn't be more excited for Summer League. Devin Carter, Colby Jones, Jalen Slauson. Like, I'm really excited to see those guys. And so I think right now, if if you were to give the Kings a draft grade for this pick, it's just an incomplete at this point. And I think it could go either way, but obviously I'm leaning towards it being a good pick because I think it makes a lot of sense if you can get a starting four for this team by trading other guards. And I just I just don't see Kevin Herter being on this roster when the season starts. And it's also pretty hard to see Davion on this roster when the season starts. He just has won me over immediately as one of those hard-nosed, high-motor type of guys that can kind of do it all and has a high basketball IQ. And also he's talking about how Sacramento was the number one place on his list of, of teams he wanted to go to. And he loves the, the atmosphere and he wants, he can't wait to like finally play in, in golden one center and feel that and light the beam and all these things. It's like, he's winning me over, of course. Um, and, and then you have, you have, 
all the uh, the Providence fans. They they got Devin Carter to be the number two trending thing on Twitter in the United States because under every post they're just friar, 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 and then they're <laughs> like they're they got an insane Twitter fan base like that. That caught me really off guard, but I love it. I love that the Kings now are a, a they have fans in Providence. They got the Iowa fans, obviously. If only we still had the the Portuguese fans for uh, with Nemeas Keda. When you look at the history of Monty McNair draft picks, it, it, it's kind of funny because he picked Tyrese Halliburton, he picked Davion Mitchell, but then when Monty McNair picked Keegan Murray, you had people saying like, "Oh, he's picking for fit. He's not picking best player available. That's a mistake." And then it turns out he was picking best player available, and like you can see that. Because this man does not pick for fit. Tyrese Halliburton didn't fit. Damian Mitchell didn't fit. Devin Carter, as the roster is currently constructed, doesn't fit. He's just picking the best players available. Now Devin, Devin Carter does fit from the perspective of the defensive-minded guard that can play next to a Fox and a Sabonis. And the fact that our two-guard spot is still very much up for grabs. So that could mean he fits. But just in terms of be, there being a lot of guards, he didn't fit. Monty McNair, he's going to pick the best player available, especially when it's in the first round in the lottery. And who knows? Devin Carter could be traded instead of some of the other guards. Still, you know, at this point, we don't know. But uh, I do like what I've seen about Devin Carter thus far. It seems like every draft expert just loves this pick. Like everything you read loves this pick for the Kings. And he just seems like a cool dude. Talking about some other things from the draft, you know, there there were a few guys slipping that um, were unexpected. Like Ron Holland went fifth. And he was a guy that was talking, him and Rob Dillingham were the guys that were like, they could slip, they could slip. And I was all in on Ron Holland. And then he goes fifth to the Pacers. I mean, the Pistons. Pistons have no shooting on that team. And then Rob Holland goes, what was it, eighth? by the Spurs traded to the Wolves, which was very interesting. I don't really understand it from the Spurs perspective, but okay. So you have those two guys off the board. I really wanted Ron Holland, but then you have Matis Buzelas, who just keeps falling, and he would have been a solid get for the Kings at, at 13, but he goes at, what was it, 11 to the Bulls. And then I was thinking, could we just go Nikola Topic? Like, I know he's going to be out. And maybe it just doesn't make sense in terms of fit. I mean, I've talked a little bit why maybe it could make sense in terms of fit uh, with Topic as a, a ball handler and playmaker. But a guy that needs the ball in his hands would have been interesting. But he goes to the Thunder at 12 and has that partially torn ACL that could have him out all season. So that, that I was very interested to see what would happen if Topic fell to us. I have no idea. But then after that, you have Dalton Connect falling all the way to 17, I believe it was, with the Lakers, which I think uh, surprised a lot of people. Deron Holmes going at 22, the Nuggets trading up for him. It was kind of funny that before the draft, it was like the Nuggets, or Deron Holmes has a promise from the Nuggets, the Nuggets are going to take him. And it was just like, yeah, I guess they're just going to take him. And then they trade up for him and they take him. And it's like, what, why there's just no one was going to stop that like no one was even going to attempt to stop that everyone was just like yeah they they're going to take Deron Holmes cool it's like okay I think that was a good pick for them and just going back to the top of the draft Alex Saar going to Rissiche going one I don't love the Rissiche pick but he could be great I don't know but I think Washington had a great draft getting Saar at two and then Klingon just he kept falling, and then there was a report that the Grizzlies had traded up for him. And then, uh, nope, that was actually wrong, and then Portland gets him at 7. And so then what does that mean? That means Zach Eady goes at 9 to Memphis. That's really interesting. You have Zach Eady out there, Jaron Jackson Jr. I mean, that team, the Grizzlies, they're going to be really good. But then how does Zach Eady factor into that? Like, no matter what happens with Zach Eady, they're going to be really good. So how does ED factor into that? That's going to be really interesting to watch. But tomorrow, the Kings have the 45th pick in the draft. It was odd on the ESPN broadcast. It said we had 45 and 48. I'm just like, that's 
that's not right. Am I going crazy? That's not right. We only have 45. And, you know, this says San Antonio has 48 via the Lakers. That sounds correct to me. Like, we, we don't have 48, right? <laughs> I feel like I would know if we had another second round pick. Pretty sure we just have 45 in ESPN. They probably had it where, like, it was San Antonio SA, right? And they made a mistake where they thought it was, like, Sacramento or something. I think that's probably what happened. But yeah, the Kings have 45. I mean, I have no idea what to expect. Just because it feels like every time we're in the second round, we either trade completely out or we just trade all around. Uh, so anything that could happen. I feel like this is probably where we take a big or a wing player. But I have no idea. Like, once you get this deep, deep into the draft for me, I got no idea. Like, I know... Of guys available in the second round, I know Johnny Furphy and Kevin McCuller because those are guys that I watched at Kansas. I know A.J. Mitchell because he played at Santa Barbara. That's about it. So I don't know what the Kings are going to do. But really, it's not it's not too much about what the Kings do tomorrow, but what they do the rest of this offseason that's intriguing. I, you know, With all the talks around Kyle Kuzma and Cam Johnson, I think those could still be on the table even you know with the draft being passed so it's not going to include the king's 13th overall pick but the kings obviously still need a starting wing could they go into next season with harrison barnes still starting sure it's possible and that would be disappointing i think at this point it would be surprising if they had drafted a wing maybe it wouldn't be so surprising if they just kept harrison barnes and then hoped that wing could grow into the starting spot but with them taking Devin Carter there's just zero chance in my mind that they could not make a trade and that's why I've been so positive but if they don't make a trade trust me that will change and I will absolutely not be positive anymore because that would be really stupid but we shall see I will be back tomorrow to recap the second round it'll probably be much shorter unless the Kings do something crazy who knows? But I'm still excited about the second round. I'm very excited about Summer League. Might head out to uh, watch some California Classic games. I don't know. It's weird the way they're doing the California Classic. Like it's uh, it's in San Francisco and Sacramento. And the Kings are going to have two teams. So one that's playing in the, the San Francisco one, one playing in the Sacramento one. That's very weird to me. Hopefully, we're sending all of our, our B team to San Francisco. Like, we want to see our guys in Sacramento. We want to see Devin Carter, Colby Jones, Jalen Slauson, and the like in Sacramento. But anyways, that is it for this episode of the Roll Report, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.